Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. And by the way, if this happens to be your very first time to be part of our Bible study together, I say a very special welcome to you. We open the Bible and we walk through books of the Bible. That's typically what we do here. We're in a study in 2 Peter, and my Bible is open to 2 Peter chapter 2 right now. If you can, get your own copy of the Word of God and join me there, 2 Peter and chapter 2. And as we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracts. My announcer is going to come on at the end and give three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Be ready and with pen and paper to jot down our contact information. I'm going to highlight one of the tracts here today, one of the tracts we have for children. And please, Get the gospel tracts from us. Let's you and I become partners in the heartbeat of God, which is giving the gospel to lost people. Now, before we talk about the track, let me lead into our Bible study this way. Many years ago, in a small rural town in upstate New York, the town was Mount Upton by name, a small girl ran out into the street and was killed by a car. Now, this happened right in front of the home of the Baptist pastor, and he ran out, and he cradled the little girl as she died. Uh, Just a few seconds later, the girl's parents came running, but it was too late. The pastor wanted to say something spiritually profound to the parents, but the only verse that came to his mind was this one out of Job, which says, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Well, the parents took their child up in their arms, and the pastor was soon back in his own house, but he was very upset with himself. That verse from Job chapter 1 was the wrong verse, he told himself. Two Sundays later, the parents, who did not go to church at all, showed up at the Baptist church. After the service, they spoke with the pastor because, you see, those words from Job 1 had haunted their souls. And before they left that day, both parents received Christ as Savior. You see, God knows how to deal with the lives of people in the midst of horrific events. Sometimes it takes a horrific life event to get people's attention to get saved, but Also, sometimes it takes a horrific life event to get believers to act like believers. Let me show you something here from 2 Peter 2 along this line. Get your Bible, get that pad of paper and join us there. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. All that is is an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation that's found in the Word of God. Each of our gospel tracts lays out the gospel. The one in front of me right now is entitled, Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. Seven Questions Boys and Girls Ask. This is designed to help lead a child to Christ. It's good for a mom and dad, for a grandparent, for a Sunday school teacher, for a vacation Bible school teacher, whatever the case may be, people that have children under their care, people who know Christ and want the children to receive Christ. Children's hearts are so tender to the gospel, but we've got to give the gospel to them in a way they get it. Here are some of the questions in this gospel track. The first one, who is God? It's answered with a Bible verse. Second question, who is Jesus? It is explained here. Third question, where do we come from? The final question is this, how can you go to heaven? It's answered with a Bible verse. Oh, friend, here is a great, great gospel tool. Seven questions boys and girls ask. Sometimes kids can ask difficult questions, can't they? Here's a tool to help answer them. 
get it from us, please be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. You and I can become partners. This is the 80th year that our ministry has been publishing gospel tracts and giving them away free of charge. Let's get on the program here. Let's you and I become partners. Well, if your Bible's open to 2 Peter chapter 2, beginning of verse 7, the Bible says this, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. We're going to stop right there. Now, I began reading here in the middle of a rather long sentence. You see, verses 4 through 10 are one long sentence, and uh, this whole sentence in, that I'm looking at here is part of a passage about God judging false teachers. I've been using the word apostate as a label for these false teachers. An apostate teacher has two characteristics. Number one, they obviously teach error. But number two, an apostate knows Bible truth, but they have willfully rejected it. They reject truth to believe lies. Now, these false teachers were leading their listeners into judgment and what the Bible passage here calls damnation. That's a pretty harsh word, but it's what God says false teachers lead their followers into. My outline title for verses 7 through 9 is this, an anchor, that's my key word here, an anchor during apostasy and coming judgment. In the passage, God was warning through the pen of Peter that God's judgment was coming due to people following the false teaching of these apostates. But the threat of judgment might have caused some of the believers for themselves to worry about whether they themselves would be caught up in this judgment. I've got four words all beginning with the letter E, like in the word elephant, that I'm going to use to help unfold what I find here primarily in verses 7, 8, and 9. Are you ready? Word number one is the word evangelism. For this one, I'm reaching back to verse 5, and here's why. Verse 5 there talks about the flood and during the time of Noah when God judged the earth. Everybody died, but God first gave those sinners an evangelist. Noah was the preacher of righteousness spoken about in verse 5. Friend, God always offers grace before he brings judgment. He's done that in your life. He's done it in my life. If you're listening today and you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, this very program is part of God's grace in your life. So E word number one is the word evangelism. E word number two is the word evacuation based upon verse 7. Verse 7 begins, the Lord delivered, the word means rescued, the Lord delivered just Lot. Now, you know the story of Sodom and Gomorrah that's brought up in verse 6 here. Fire from God came down to destroy the two cities due to their immorality. Abraham's nephew named Lot and Lot and his two daughters did escape the judgment. Why? Because the judgment was coming on sinners, not on believers. Lot, verse 7 says, was a just man, a born-again man. Now, I'm going to return to Lot's story more than likely next week and pick up some things there. There's some things that are just, well, to borrow a theological term, become curiouser and curiouser. These verses here about judgment are actually focused really on God's ultimate final judgment and throwing people, unbelievers, into hell. I do, though, happen to see in Lot's story a picture of the rapture of church-age saints before the time of tribulation talked about there in the book of the Revelation. A horrific time of God's judgment is going to come, but God is going to rapture or rescue out church-age saints because they are saved. Now, let me add another note here. Have believers, believers in God, ever been killed in an event of God's judgment? The answer to that is yes, they have. 
If you go back to the Old Testament, think of the story of Daniel and the prophet Ezekiel. They're both prophets. They were taken captive during a time of God's judgment on the nation of Judah for Judah's sin. But when Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, finally did sack and burn the city of Jerusalem. He killed many people. I'll guarantee you some godly people died in that day. But listen, while earthly temporal judgments may hurt believers, the ultimate judgment of God on sinners will not hurt any believer in God. Why did God rescue Lot? For one reason and one reason only, he was saved. The Bible calls him this just man. He calls him a righteous man. Verse 7 says Lot was the just man. But notice verse 7 also says that Lot's soul was vexed. That means his soul, his emotional life was wearing down and in distress due to the sins of the people around him. Verse 8 uses the English word vexed again. It translates a different Greek word. This one means tormented. That is the very word used over in Revelation chapter 20, where Satan is described as being cast into the lake of fire forever and ever, and is tormented. That's the word forever and ever. It's used here of the soul of Lot. I need to stop here and just take some a few minutes and frankly do some personal soul searching. Lot, in my book, was not a godly man. He was not a godly believer. He was saved but wasn't living godly. I would please like to think and believe that Mark Smith is living his life for Jesus Christ in a better manner than Lot lived his life. But how am I reacting to the wickedness and the sinfulness that I am seeing in my day? Does the present moral climate, does it vex my soul like it vexed Lot's soul? Does the moral climate of my day cause my heart to be in turmoil and toil? But then, does the sin of my day, does it torment me? Does deep anguish fill me when I see the the vulgarness of the societal sins around me? Perhaps, just perhaps, dear beloved friend, one of the reasons that the Bible-preaching churches of our day as a whole are having a weak impact on our era is because the church people in our Bible-preaching churches no longer anguish over the sins that are overwhelming the society that we live in. Wow. You and I pray a lot in our prayer meeting times about stub toes and all kinds of, may I politely say, temporal things. But when was the last time as a local church we were broken and in anguish over the societal sins that we are having to live in and our young people are growing up and being pressured about? Our young people are being pressured to have group think about sinful things and accept sin as being right and right as being wrong. This ought to bring anguish to our soul, turmoil to our soul. And we adults and us grandparents need to be broken and broken in prayer over the sin of our day. God help us. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois 61702. Again, our phone number is 309 828 6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.